Today, on a very special episode of Beard and Board, Captain Morgan learns a lesson in maturity. Too weird? Stick around, you'll see what I'm talking about. I just said, yes, man, So today we're going to be testing out a product called Barrel Char in a Jar. Let's get started. So what the heck is going on today? Well, I got contacted by a guy named Ken who runs a company that sells uh, liquor aging kits. And he asked me to test out his kit and review it and so that's what we're going to do. I got the kit for free, but that's all I got. So uh, he's going to get an honest review about whether or not I like it or want to recommend it. So let's dig into this and see what he sent me. First off, we've got some coffee filters and that's going to be for, I assume, straining out the liquor after, uh, after we get it aged. Coffee decanter, liter size mason jar, wide mouth packing paper, nice little bottle. So I think he said this is his complete kit. Uh, he sells a couple of different ones. He's a small company, he's on Etsy. Another little bottle, instructions, always handy. Bunch of funnels, activated charcoal, very nice. That's a good touch. Little ladle, some tongs, that, see, that's actually a lot of thoughtfulness, putting these in there to uh, help get all the chunks of wood out. Smart. And now for the fun part. We get to play with wood. That probably doesn't sound right. All right, we have lots of cool stuff to test here. First off, French oak, medium plus toast, three good sized chunks. Cherry, medium toast, three sticks. White oak bourbon barrel char, so that's probably a number three char. So you get that kind of alligator skin texture on there. Ooh, sugar maple, I've always wanted to try some of this. Medium toast and Birch, medium toast. I have never heard of anybody using birch before. Wow. I'd have to say, this is a pretty thorough little selection of wood. Um, the birch, I really was not expecting because in all the research I've done about liquor aging, I've never ever heard of anybody using birch. But this is a medium toast but you can smell the sweetness in there. Interesting. I am excited about that. I mean, I'm excited about the whole thing, but I'm really intrigued by that birch. So what are we gonna test this on? I've always wanted to age some of my own rum. So we're gonna do a little Captain Morgan white rum. And you can get the Captain Morgan, this one's a 750, but you can also get 1.75. And I think that's what that big jar is for. If you wanna do a lot, um, then you can do a big jar. The other thing we're going to test out, we're going to try some of this uh, super trendy American born uh, white whiskey. This is basically just an unaged corn and sugar spirit. When big distilleries throw stuff in barrels and they age it, they usually do it at about 126 proof. And the reason why is because alcohol is a solvent and so the stronger that solvent is, the more it has a tendency to pull all of the flavor compounds out of the wood. Uh, more thoroughly, faster. The American-born moonshine will go a little bit quicker than the Captain because that's it's 103 proof, so it's 51 and a half percent alcohol, and the Captain is 40 percent alcohol, so it's 80 proof. So it's going to go a little bit slower. So now that we've got our moonshine and our uh, white rum, uh, Ken recommends that you save some in a small bottle to taste the, the pure spirit so that when you get done aging, you can compare it between the, uh, the unaged spirit and the aged spirit, just so you have a really uh, firm understanding of the different characters that have developed over time. I think that's a great idea, and providing the little bottles is pretty smart. I did not know that there were gonna be this many different varietals of wood available for me to test out. So rather than just age a, a big, you know, a whole bottle of this in one type of wood, I have to try out as many as I can because 
Holy crap, this is cool. I've got a bunch of these little jelly jars that uh, occasionally I save because I'm a little bit weird. So what I'm gonna do is test out some of the white whiskey and some of the rum with different types of wood so that I can, you know, see how things develop. And since each of these pieces of wood is for about a 750 milliliter bottle, I'm gonna cut them up into a few smaller pieces. One, so that they fit, but two, I don't want to uh, overload and over oak the uh, spirit. So let's get these things loaded. You know what we should do before adding the wood? Should probably taste that whiskey and the uh, rum, you know, for science and stuff. Seriously, it is just a taste. What do you think, I'm some kind of a lush? Not a whole lot of character going on in this one. Okay, that's good. There's some um, banana, some clove, mango-y, raspberry kind of thing. Weird. Here's what's awesome, because it's already got several flavors that I can kind of identify. It's not just a neutral spirit like a vodka or something. That means that whatever the wood does to it, it's going to be significant. You're really going to taste things turning up to a lemon. That's awesome. I can't wait to see what happens. Wow, first thing that hits your nose is kind of a candy corn thing. You can definitely smell a lot of sugar, corn, To me, it's got more aroma than flavor. The flavor is just kind of, you know, strong alcohol, a little bit of corn. First blush for the American-born moonshine. I can't really say it's blowing my skirt up. Cool spout on the on the jar. That's kind of cool. But yeah, the flavor's not really doing much for me. I'm not picking up much in the aroma of the rum. It's more in the flavor. So now that we've got our tasting out of the way, let's go ahead and cut up some wood pieces and get these guys going. Okay, so here's how the test is gonna go. I'm gonna do white whiskey and rum. In each jar, I'm gonna put a little chunk of wood. We've got the birch, cherry, bourbon barrel, white oak, and the sugar maple. Since I'm using the bottles that Ken provided in the kit, I had to chop the wood up small so that it'll fit down in the neck of the, uh, of the vessel. When you chop up the wood, you're exposing even more surface area to the liquor, and so it's actually going to extract flavors faster. That might be good, but then again, it might be a problem. I don't know, we'll find out. Okay, so we've got our jars and our bottles filled up. My little jars are 200 milliliters. We've got just about the same amount of liquid in all of the jars and uh, an equal amount of wood. And we're gonna give this a, a steep. Now Ken recommends about 40 days at a minimum. I think that's really good advice because if you watched my previous uh, series on aging in a bourbon barrel, uh, link right up here in the description, you'll see that some places they recommend doing a week or 10 days or something for your whiskey. That's dumb. So go with like 30, 40, 50, 60 days. Personally, I'm gonna check them at 40, give them a taste, see if I like them, um, but I'm probably gonna let them go for two full months, so 60 days. The hard part is leaving it alone. Just don't mess with it. Don't go taste it because you won't like it. There's a kind of alchemy, a kind of magic that happens after a certain period of time, usually at least a month, before things really start to develop where it's like, hmm, this is something yummy. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. The activated charcoal, about one teaspoon per 750 milliliter bottle is what he recommends in the instructions. So I'm gonna go with way less than that since my containers are so much smaller. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of activated charcoal in each one just to, uh, see what the whole process can provide us. See if it can give us a, a smoothing, because that's what the charcoal is supposed to do. It's supposed to help smooth the flavors out just a little bit. Let's give it every benefit and a little bit of assistance we can. It was in the box, might as well use it. So I'm just gonna seal these up, throw some tape on them so I can make little labels so I know what's in them. And uh, then I'm gonna stick these out in the shed. 
one of the things that uh, Ken talks about in the instructions is the, the heat change, and that's very true. Uh, distilleries like to have these hot warehouses where they keep all their barrels so that they can get um, kind of a contraction and expansion uh, with the heat and the cool and the heat and the cool as the seasons change that uh, makes the wood actually kind of breathe like a sponge. It sucks in liquor and it pushes it out and so you get this interesting little flow, this transfer of compounds and liquor and it's really fascinating stuff. I'm just gonna leave them out in the shed for a couple of months and try not to think about them. Now that I've got all my liquor stored in the five million degree shed, um, we'll just let it do its thing until uh, 40 to 60 days. If you want to find out how it tastes, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click the little bell icon right next to it so you can get notified when I post the update for this video or any of the other content I release. Uh, if you like this video, if you thought it was interesting, go ahead and hit that like button. If you have any comments, go ahead and leave them in the comments section down below. I'll put the link for this down in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and um, yeah. I think that's about it. I'm really sad that I can't drink all that because I only bought enough alcohol to do the test. I don't... Oh, I do have more alcohol. For a second there, I was really bummed that I ran out of alcohol doing it for this test, but then I remembered I already have some out here. <laughs> and my day just got a little bit brighter. Thanks for watching. Talk at you later.